This is actress. I've got this feeling that it's Nina. We need to find a way to let go. I would know if she died. You've never been clear on exactly what you remember. Could be basic trauma. You'd be surprised what the human brain can edit out when it can't handle the truth. What's going to happen to her? Well, that's top secret. Censor is set in 1985 against the backdrop of social hysteria surrounding video nasties. Um, so essentially this is kind of when uh, the birth of VHS happened in the UK. There were a bunch of, you know, horror films that weren't getting screened in cinemas because uh, they weren't being passed for cinema. So as soon as VHS happened, these horror films could go direct to the home where anybody can watch them, they can rewind and rewatch them again and again and again. And there was a huge panic around what these films were going to do to our minds, uh, to society, whether they were going to turn us all into murderers and psychopaths. And the reaction in the UK to VHS horror was probably one of the most conservative reactions in the whole Western world. And then I started to think about this character, this um, film censor who was watching these violent images all day and perhaps what if they started to have a complicated conversation with their own moral compass? What if they started to think that maybe they were deep down a terrible person and something was going to awaken that part of them, something that they saw in a film? I was lucky enough that I sat down with censors and actually talked to them and um, it was just fascinating to think that you could spend so much time within a dark room looking at such intense... Um, videos for such a long period of time and how that would actually have a psychological effect on someone. But interestingly, the conversations that what we really actually focused on was the psychological state that Enid is on. And for me, it was important that the fact that she had this deep-rooted childhood trauma and that was so deeply seeded within her that as it manifests into adolescence, how that could change a person and what I felt was this was a this is a woman who was actually dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and because of that is incredibly vulnerable and aware of all of the dangers that you know come at her in life and I think that that was something in which grounds her in this profession of being a film censor. I mean what is it with these directors? Male inadequacy, revenge catharsis. Didn't that get to you? Some of those scenes were so excessive. Just focus on getting it right. Don't really think about anything else. Also, there was the kind of social and political aspect of what was going on during the period, so I was sending her God, loads of essays and um, articles and news clippings and things from the period, as well as, obviously, a watch list of video nasties. For about a month leading up to shoot, my dreams were incredibly warped. I understood where the character was coming <laughs> from in that, like, <laughs> reality and, 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 you know, reality and, and fiction and where the lines were beginning to blur because a lot of the time I'd watch, I'd get home after a day's filming and then start watching these video nasties just to have, like, an idea of, of what the character was watching at the time. Maybe you could help me. I was looking for some of the more unusual Frederick North films. I've seen, um, Don't Go in the Church. Huh? Perhaps maybe you might have something else of his under the counter. One of the things I love about Neve is that, um, she brings so much empathy to every role that she plays. And Enid could be a very closed character. Um, she's, uh, she doesn't, she's very censored. She doesn't speak very openly about her uh, inner thoughts and, and feelings, she's kind of repressed and pushing them all down. And and Neve was able to allow us into that and she puts thought on screen. I think that's one of the things she does amazingly. Internalising a lot of emotions, the camera reads everything. You don't need to say and play. It's, if, you, if you're thinking it, the audience is going to be able to think it too. I like the idea of a character who is existing 
in the darkness and in the same way she's emotionally kind of closed she's um you know there's very it's very much leaning into like the shadow self uh and so we seen it kind of moving deeper into darkness at various moments in the film psychologically she's becoming more and more single minded about what is happening or what might have happened in her past and what that means is happening uh, in the present. So that's representing her um, sort of psychological state, this idea of a single-minded woman getting closer and closer to something very deep and dark. We specifically talked about um, the visuals of the character and what she wears and kind of goes from this incredibly upright and proper person to someone who's kind of hunched over and um, collapsing in on herself. And so we looked at like costuming and the idea that these glasses present a mask for the character. It is actually physically filtering out what she sees and we chose very specific moments in the script of where the glasses were gonna come off and, and the first moment is when she sees Don't Go in the Church. And I just love when you go and watch a film like that, the thought that goes in from the from all aspects of a collaborative process, from the costuming to the hair and makeup and to, to the lighting. And even in the costuming, you see that the character, when she goes down this detective journey, she, you know, she is becoming almost like a detective in herself. The, you know, the, the coat is this armour. It's like a detective jacket and as she begins to kind of pierce through into her own kind of past, we kind of talk, look, talked about it as if she's physically piercing herself and the bruising colour kind of comes through. So these very greys and muted browns turn into all these purples and reds and that comes through in the costuming. And um, so it was an amazing collaborative process. We, we kind of have Enid at the beginning of the film. She very much belongs to the world that she's in. Her costume is the greys and blues of the census office and she kind of belongs to that world. And then as the uh, film progresses, we go into her dreams where we start to introduce pinks and purples and it gets a little bit more Argento and Suspiria-esque. And when we come back out of that world, we sort of bring a little bit of Enid's dream colour into the census office. So you might start to introduce the pinks and purples in the background for the first time. Enid? Also, there's a point in the film where she starts to break away colour-wise from the, the worlds that she's in and she starts to not quite fit in visually. Look at me. We shot the wood scenes towards the end of the shoot. It wasn't great weather, let's say. It was October, November. Um, so, yeah, not, not lovely weather to be out in, especially for the actors in their 90s. <laughs> um, but they were troopers. And the, the ravine, I, when I found that, I, I had this image in my head of like an old cartoon um, from being a kid where, you know, the world had split in two or something and there was this big gap down the middle and, and it, it felt really dramatic, but it was very muddy and very wet um, and uh, very intense. And I'm in this, like, nighty that kept on, like, getting stuck. So I was like, I, I actually, when I fell onto the ground, I wasn't meant to be down for the whole shot. I was actually trying to, meant to stand and I got, like, suctioned in and I got stuck on this rock. And we did the we did the take and Prana was like, yeah, we're yeah, we're that that's it. We got we got the wide. We're gonna go in for the close up. And I was like, oh, are you sure? And she's like, no, no, no. This is this is where the scene is meant to play. So I think what you have in your head about um, how you think a scene might go, uh, especially like early on in 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 a in a rehearsal space in a studio. But you just have to when you get to the set, you just have to go with what is being thrown at you. Neve has this um, incredible range and where she goes in the latter part of the film emotionally, you know, she she just blew me away. She's a coiled spring at the beginning and then she shoots us into this emotional stratosphere by the end. It was what a character that you go home with every night and I, I like to think that like I'm good at like leaving them behind and on set, but this was one, Enid was the one that really got under my skin. 